course. Ah, oh, nice little weekend at Kokomo. That wouldn't be too bad, would it? It's a Bay FM male health show. And of course, uh, Madonna is here. And also, lovely Linda, who's full of beans today. <laughs> well, compared to what you have been like. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, so welcome back, Linda. Uh, we've been chatting about chronic fatigue. And throughout the song, we were chatting about what the most important thing you wanted to get across to listeners was. And it was really about getting the diagnosis, getting the correct support? Absolutely. Um, it concerns me that people will be out there that are suffering from chronic fatigue and they're thinking, this isn't right, but I really don't know if it's not right. And where will I turn? Who will I turn to? What can I do? You really are the expert in your own life, but you do need professionals in the um, world, such as um, Madonna and doctors, that know what they're talking about as well. But however, the main thing for me I found was that um, I really wanted someone there that would be able to provide me with the answers. Yeah. And I went... Um, Which was important for your marriage too, because yeah. when you're exhausted at home and you're yeah. unable to cook meals and, you mm -hmm. know, sort of things are falling apart, it's yeah. hard to just say, well, I'm exhausted, I'll flat out getting through the things I have to do today. And my husband truly was sick of hearing it. Um, in the end, we realised that my husband had compassion fatigue and, and that is from listening to um, my ill health or me not being able to provide it, um, everything that needed to be done. Can you chat a little bit more about compassion fatigue? Because mm. a lot of people are probably suffering it and they don't even know they yeah. are. Yeah, well, if you have someone in your life that it has a, um, a physical illness, chronic illness or a mental illness, um, even a disability, um, you can end up getting quite fatigued having to hear it all the time and having to support them. And you yourself actually will need, might need care as um, a carer or a supporter of that person that is not well. Yeah. And that's actually what compassion fatigue is. It's, it's that exhaustion with your compassion, you, you actually can end up losing it. You, you, it's like, I just don't want to give anymore. I've given so much, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of this, listening to this person. I can't do it. Yeah. And I've actually had friends um, that left their partners because they couldn't deal with it. Yeah. And it's a really real thing. And you're talking both men and women, aren't you? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And this is where it's good if you can see a counsellor um, to support you with that as well. Um, or even just being honest and articulating where you're actually at. Yeah. Whether you can um, provide that support or not. Yeah. I do actually have so many of my clients who have been through chronic illness and they say exactly what... They, they get to the spot where they can't tell their partner any more about what's going on because their partners are just over it. Like, it is... It's really common. Well, that's where it's really good to link up with support groups um, yeah. that around either the chronic illness or just link in with others because it does help. But one of the issues is with a chronic, like cr chronic illness or chronic fatigue is you don't actually get the opportunity to link in yes. with other people. So you have to, if you've got the internet, there's groups by there that you can link yeah. in with. Yes. Because you'll be socially isolated because you're just too exhausted. So to even on out. places like Facebook and that sort of thing, there would be lots of groups, lots of support groups. Yes. I think one of the things that I've seen, I will mention this, that there's a lot of groups where people identify with the illness as themselves. So there are cancer support groups, for example, and they say, I'm a pancreatic cancer sufferer. And you go, well, I don't want to be I am anything like that. So I think we have to be careful about our wording, yeah, you know, so... True. Uh, because that can then create, oh, you know, it, it's just not the best best well, mindset to think of yourself as an illness. Well, the thing is, you can be part of a like a wellness group. Um, I do emotional freedom technique tapping. Um, there's so what I've uh, so that's been around for about twenty, thirty years, something like that. I'm really not sure exactly how yeah. long, but it's um, it's combined. I do it combined with cognitive behavioural therapy, and it is a wonderful tool yeah. to help people. And they can learn it themselves as yes. well. But counsellors can do it. Um, so there's groups, different groups around that you can link in with that can look at wellness and have a more positive outlook and look at diet. Yes. Um, so diet-wise, what did you need to change to start seeing some improvement? Well, when I um, saw you, and that was after I'd come out of the night in hospital trying to work out what was wrong, yeah. 
I committed to changing. And so what I did um, after I saw you was I went, I did go dairy free and gluten free because it was causing inflammation to my body. Yeah. Um, I also looked at going mainly organic and whole food. Whole meaning... Um, non-processed. Yeah, non-processed. Yeah. So I noticed that within five to six weeks that it, it made a difference. I could see the difference. I was feeling a lot better. I was looking a lot better. And your gut, you know, those digestive symptoms you'd been having and that liver pain that you'd yeah. had for so long? No, no, that, that stopped. <laughs> yeah, okay. It didn't take long for that to, for me to notice the changes with the, the liver because um, yeah. I had a fatty liver. And recent tests have shown I've got no liver issues at all. So, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, I totally have seen the difference in terms of diet. I yeah. regularly go and get healthy drinks as well as making them. When I say healthy, I love lots of green drinks yeah. and then you can add lime into that. And Lovely. Yeah. So with and those drinks obviously work well for your gut and for your energy and everything? When I'm, if I'm feeling a bit... Um, like I'm going to come down with something. Yes. I will immediately get myself a really um, nutritious veggie drink, fresh. Yeah. And I think the veggie drink's the big thing. A lot of people go along to these juice bars and then they get a lot of fruit juices, mm. but obviously fruit juices have a lot of fructose. Mm. Fructose creates fatty liver. It's one yeah. of the reasons for for our non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So it's uh, So fructose is one of these things that, you know, and all that... Was it a year, two years that you quite had that addiction to sugar? Oh, I think I had. It was a while. <laughs> <laughs> I had a terrible diet for a long time and it was quite shameful. Yeah. And I have a happy, awesome life now. Yeah. I just, I'm just so glad I changed my life. We might have another quick little, mm. quick little break with Paul J, and uh, we'll be back in a moment. Yes, Bay FM Health and uh, lovely Madonna and Linda in here. Uh, 